Oma, well, tell us about the skull and how you've gone about using that to um, actually get the bits fitting, etc., and why you use it. Right. When I first started, uh, it was a fascination, and you know, like you passionate about what you are doing. Um, I had to learn for myself, and I just collected a whole lot of different skulls. Whenever anyone was had a horse put down, I would ask, if possible, to get it on all different breeds. A lot of people don't realize how wide the top jaw is, the bottom jaw is very, very narrow. And that is where the bit sits. And if you look inside your horse's mouth, I say always close the horse's mouth, lift the lips, and look at the gap between what we call the bars. Now obviously you've got all your flesh there, but when that is closed, have a look at the gap between the bars. And it's generally the thickness of a man's forefinger, okay. which is 16 millimeters. Therefore, by going more than 16, and everyone wants these big fat bits. What's happening then, the horse can't close its mouth. So automatically, we're very clever. We always put a drop nose band or clamp it closed because the mouth is open. So now we're creating pressures on the bar before we've even touched the rein. Something and else that's really interesting that I heard the other day was um, from uh, a, a dental technician yes. saying that if you close the horse's mouth too tight here, you create tension at the top of of the head here and yes. so you actually lock the horse yes so yes. it's actually a fallacy to be tying that drop nose back 100 percent correct 100 percent correct you know uh, again we get back pressure equals resistance okay. every time you're doing one of these it's another pressure point which is going to be another point of resistance which is adding more to lack of control and it will evade you in some different way correct i always say if a horse is going to open its mouth before closing it let's establish what is causing the problem and address the problem rather than just clamping it closed because all we're doing there is creating another problem yes the other most important thing is the size of that horse's tongue the the jawbone is very narrow okay. the horse's tongue is as big as my forearm and that has got to fit in there. We'll take the conventional, what I call single brake snaffle. It goes on, and you can see whatever we do, it's putting pressure. And the snaffle now is giving you a nutcracker action, which is squashing the tongue, and it's putting pressure on the bars. And a horse, being an animal of flight, a horse will never yield to pressure, it'll always run away from pressure or pain. So with this now, that action, typical, if, if, if it doesn't like tongue pressure, this bit will throw the horse's head up, up in the air. So that is a single break. Then you would go to a, what I call a three-piece bit. Now you can see it's putting less bar pressure because there is more tongue pressure and by creating tongue pressure 80 85 percent of horses when you do that it's going to bring the head down okay the wider i make that joint the more tongue pressure i'm creating and the less bar pressure so bar will lift tongue will drop these joints all vary um bomber puts plates some with a roller and some of these are elliptical. Yes. What's the difference in those, Bomber? All I'm doing is just creating either a bigger or a smaller surface area. As I demonstrated earlier with my finger against yes. you there and there, yes. the same applies there. That length there and that length there is the same length, 45 millimeters, but that has got a bigger surface area. So that is slightly kinder to the tongue. That is slightly sharper. Now this one is what I call the Buster Roller. I've made that link shorter. And by shortening that, it is now going to create bar pressure. And bar pressure, the horses that you find running downhill, leaning on you down there, this will now lift the head up. Because it's working on the bars. On the bars. That little roller comes in on the tongue and it tucks the chin in. So you're lifting and tucking and at doing the same that time. Too. Everyone knows the Barry Gag in polo. Uh, the Barry Gag is a strong bit, but generally what the Barry is, is for lifting a horse's head up. You find when they get tired or they resist 
they're inclined to lean down and get heavy on you, and a barry will lift it. Okay. But the Buster because, Roller... Because of the offset, you're correct, getting even more bar You're getting pressure. correct, more bar pressure, and I like okay. to demonstrate on your arm, if I do that, you can feel the pressure. Very much so. Okay. So now if I take the Busterola, which, which is that one, and I'll take, take your arm again, you can see there, but now it's minimized there. I can feel the pressure still though. Yes, you Where can. Where you put that, the plate there. If, now you can feel Absolutely there's Absolutely no bar less. pressure at all. Correct. Okay. Correct. That's really interesting.